the question that people keep asking me is, are you sad? Since I had just such a great response to my last video uh, where I shared from the heart, uh, I thought that I would uh, do an unscripted, uh, unplanned uh, answer video to the most frequently asked questions we've gotten. Not sure when uh, I'll release this. Uh, I'm guessing it'll be quite a few months from when, or at least weeks from when I'm actually recording this. Uh, but if you didn't know, maybe a spoiler alert, we sold the land where this cabin is sitting. Uh, that was not the plan. That was never the plan. Uh, we, on purpose, uh, created a, uh, technically a subdivision with the land that we had and we separated off the property where the house is. And I think you know from our other video that um, that we were putting the house on the market. But that wasn't this land. That wasn't ever the plan. This was a, this was my oasis. This was my, uh, this was my attempt to get to a point that I saw my parents get to where they burned the mortgage and they were, they owned their land free and clear, the land I grew up on, the house that me and my dad built together with our own two hands. And for me at 45 years old, I had the opportunity to do that. I had this strange shaped piece of land that when this land was surveyed and laid out in 1927, they didn't know what to do with it. Um, uh, if you've never been to the house, imagine a baseball diamond and the bottom of the diamond home plate is where our driveway was. It was a tiny, tiny little piece of land, but the road curved uh, right in front of our house. And so as they platted out what was a mill town, this was a mill town for beacon blankets. As they platted out each individual spot where they were gonna put a mill house, there was this weird piece of land. And in fact, our, our property has two driveways on it because what was supposed to happen was there was supposed to be another house. And they didn't, they never did it. And so what ended up is this the largest, the largest plot of land in hundreds and hundreds of plots of land that Beacon Manufacturing laid out. This was the largest lot because I think it was supposed to be two or maybe even three because there's a flat spot on our neighbor's, uh, neighbor's land. And so what, and we bought it knowing that. We didn't buy it just because it was an abandoned house that we could put our, our mark on. We bought it because there was potential. We own all the way from our house through the patch of woods where the, where the cabin sits all the way to the US Highway 70. We own a cliff face. We own behind both of our neighbor's houses, which you could never tell sitting just staring at the front of our house. So we split that. And by splitting that, I created a patch of land close to an acre with a driveway and a whole section of woods that was my own. And I own this free and clear. There's no mortgage on this. And that was this wonderful thing for me. It was really great for Allie at 30 years old to own a piece of land. I guarantee none of her friends own a piece of land in a highly sought after real estate area of the United States at 30 years old. I'm proud for her, I'm proud for me. And then this cabin. <laughs> um, not only do I own a piece of land, 
I got to build a cabin in the woods, a pretty darn cool cabin too. So that was the goal. That was the original intent for this. Um, even if we'd have ended up building the church house that you've heard us talk about, this still would have been a cool thing that you wouldn't be able to see from anywhere. So the question that I keep getting as my friends realize that we sold not just the house, but sold the land that has the cabin on it, they keep asking me, are you sad? And I didn't have an answer for them. I don't know that I have an answer now. Probably a terrible time to make a video when I don't have an answer to a most frequently asked <laughs> question. Um, yeah, though, I'm sad. Um, I put a lot of myself into this cabin. I'm older than I want to be. I'm fatter than I want to be. Every single Saturday, something hurt so bad. And I wasn't doing hard work. But I came back every Saturday to hurt myself again because this matters. I'm incredibly, incredibly proud of this cabin. And the scariest part, the part that makes this the saddest, is I don't know if I'm gonna get a chance to do this again. I don't know what our future holds. I don't know if our future is here, in another state. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm physically able or will be, I should say. In 10 years, will I be physically able to do this? Um, so the question, are you sad? The reason that I can't say and that I couldn't immediately say yes, even though Clearly I am. Was that this made sense. There's a path that Allie and I are on. We have goals that are five-year goals, 10-year goals. Those goals are pretty specific. I'm not going to share them here. But they are pretty specific goals. And being able to sell the house and sell this land with the cabin on it helps us accomplish those goals. We didn't know. If, if, in case you were wondering, the plan was not to sell the house. I got a job offer that was almost too good to pass up in conjunction with the insane real estate market in a tourist driven area that we live in now. And it made all the sense in the world to do something that we did not plan on doing. I think at some point we were gonna sell this house, of course. We had plans to build the Gribbenshire Church House. This house would have been sold. The plan was never to keep, that was not our forever home. That was our, let's turn a pile of trash, a literally an abandoned house 
into something beautiful. And that was the plan, and that furthered the next thing. That wasn't the plan right now. That was a years down the road plan. This job opportunity, the things that came with it, uh, provided us an early exit in a really good real estate market, which then solves years of work. It literally solves years of our planning to those goals I mentioned. We had to take it. And when all of a sudden the possibility of additional money and additional years and years off of our planning by selling this piece of land and this beautiful cabin, it had to happen. So that's why I couldn't immediately answer people, no, I'm not. Like I, I couldn't. I couldn't say, yes, I'm sad because in reality, I'm happy. I'm happy for what this means for Allie and I's life. But this was mine. This was my cabin in my woods on my land. And that is sad. I'm not upset. No, I'm not upset at all. I'm happy. I'm happy for this next step that we're taking as a couple. As our family, I'm happy. Um, but looking back on this, number one, I'm gonna be super happy I did this. Number two, I'm gonna be super sad to leave it. And while those seem completely polar opposites, they can go hand in hand. And I'm all right with that. I'm all right with them going hand in hand. I'm all right with a thing I wanted really, really bad is going away for something else that I want even more. So, thanks for watching on this journey. YouTube's been fun. It's been a really good adventure. I found out that I just pick a word some videos I say so like a hundred times. Other videos I say um 200 times. <laughs> One video I said the word video like in a row like 20 times in like a minute. <laughs> Used to think I was a good talker. <laughs> then I recorded myself and found out that wasn't true. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this build series. Uh, thanks for supporting us. And uh, catch you on the flip side.